So we did get to the Shrine drive through tree. It was actually $15 for a vehicle. And he said our vehicle would not go in because... It's too wide. It's too wide. And a walk-in to go and see it is $4 a person. So right now, the best viewing one and participating one is the Klamath. At $5. At $5. And if you wanted to walk up to it, it was free. So we have chosen not to do it, especially if it, we're not going to get the truck anywhere near the tree because we're too wide. And it does stay when you get to the actual booth um, that no large SUVs pick up trucks and someone else which I missed. But uh, yeah, so be aware that if you're coming to do the Shrine drive through tree and you have a pickup truck, you're probably not going to get into it. And uh, it's literally one minute from the parking lot. It's a very in 400 feet at the end of the road, turn right to Avenue of the Giants. It's a very commercialized setup. A bit more going on that you could walk around, really. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not paying 15 bucks for something no. that we can't get to. And to be honest with you, $4 per person to walk up to it to go and have a look at it. Um, yeah. But this is what you do see, is the the entrance way to it, uh, especially a bit more over that way. So yeah, open sunrise, closed at sunset. And it does creep up on you as well. Um, you know, it's, it's there, then it's not there, and then next minute it's there. So. So let me give you a guided tour of our campground. We are in the middle of the woods, literally. Uh, the spaces are quite big. There's Sandra. And again, like I said earlier, we actually got on a tent site and it's supposed to be a tent site and I thought I'd booked a RV site. So it's a short site. Um, very tall firings but half of it is full of uh, ash. You do get a bear box. And for a tent site, there's quite a bit of space to actually put your uh, tents on. So this is sort of our area here. I think I should try this again with the wide angle. So I stand over here. We have quite a bit of area, even down to that log and the truck. So you can see this square right here. There's a couple of them right in this area here. That's the car park for our area. We did put up our gazebo because we thought there was mosquitoes. We actually found very little mosquitoes and I haven't been bothered by them. Um, let's just go to the other side. So it is tight for the truck with this trailer on this site. I'll show you on the road side here. So we are just about off of it. And we've got our same setup that we had before. Two sides, washing line, and our camp set up. It'll be dark in here, unfortunately. I'm gonna put this light on. It might help out a bit. So got our table, there's no power on this site. So it's gonna be more of a living area. It hasn't changed. Not really, hasn't really changed, but it just gives you an idea of where we are. It's quite a nice site, but it is a bit gloomy and doomy because of the tall trees. Like the one above us here has got to be 250 feet and we're not getting any sun in here so we'll be charging her up via the truck. 
Just going to give you a quick video on our battery charging. So I'm using the truck right now as the generator plugged into the back and I've got my two stage lithium charging the flashlights on so it's killing the light there you go uh, this was what was inside or what I purchased for our reflection fifth wheel and I'm using this now to charge my lithium batteries in the trailer and I modified a set of jumper cables and put an Anderson plug on and I'm got the black Anderson plug which is already on the trailer wire to the batteries and I can directly do this and I'm kicking around 30 amps right now and I'll do a screenshot of my Victron system um, so you can see the charging and right now the fan has just kicked back out of this one uh, it's working really well right now we came in at 89% and a few seconds ago I was at 92% and just to give you an idea of what the truck is doing, we are producing 660 watts. And I'll give you the sound from the inverter system that's inside of the truck. Now we are obviously stationary, so this thing obviously is working. So the fans are kicking in, you can hear that. So I've just vented the windows right now. It's a bit messy in the back of the truck right now because we've just arrived. Uh, making the ice for the ice maker at the same time. Might as well while we're charging the batteries. And one other one. Well, this one is charging these batteries in the little trailer. I will show you that the lithium battery charger that's behind here in the Milwaukee kit. This one, I'm not sure if you're going to see it, is plugged in as well. So just down here, that's all already in. Don't worry about them flashing, it's just because the camera lights are picking it up. Um, and we're charging just under 5 amps, charging up the truck battery to run this fridge for overnight as well. And this has already picked up uh, one percent two percent I think it is but I'll do a screenshot very shortly to show you both now when you see the screenshot the top one will be the battery that's keeping the uh, fridge in the truck going and the lower one will be the battery that is in the trailer I'll give you an idea exactly what we are doing Good morning everybody, we are on our way south today, we are heading towards Byers Flats, Miranda and another town that I've forgotten, I want to say Grabbersville, but it's probably said wrong, that's a memory loss kicking in, but there you go, uh, we did drive a bit of this route yesterday to find the shrine tree, which we explained yesterday, and uh, we're going to carry on this route to see more sites and uh, see if we can pick up any more river entries. If not, we may, depending on time, finish this route today and then uh, realistically, I'm going to pull in here and realistically hit the highway and come straight back to the river that we were at uh, yesterday. Look at this tree. Imagine that one coming across the road when you were driving. Holy. He's a big one. He is a big one. And I'm not saying that they cut or shave the trees down, but either the trees are growing around the road with vehicles traveling down the high, so high-sided vehicles. But in some cases, it looks like They've shaved the tree for the vehicles to be able to pass by the side of some of these trees that are really close to the side of the road. I'll have to see if I can find one. Look at the size of these. They are pretty big. Right, look at this one. Wow. Side of the road. Sorry? 
right? Big hole in the tree. Ah. But you don't see him until you're like on him or past him. Yesterday, the drive-through tree. This is the shrine drive-through tree. In our opinion, as we said, not worth it. Maybe there's more going on inside because it's a bit more touristy. Some sculptures, but uh, not for us. And this is the town of population of 200 of Myers Flat. This seems to be a bit more towards the Sasquatch, or I think they call it Bigfoot down here, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bigfoot. And uh, eight, oh, six miles, okay. Some of this amazing woodwork, <laughs> and we've ended up picking up a piece. So I'll show you the piece we got in a bit, but we've actually compromised and picked up a piece that looks like this. This is amazing. So amazing woodwork, absolutely amazing. So, just my imagination is not there and my skill set is not here to actually make stuff like this. Some live edge down here. This table wows the hell out of me. It's unreal. So, but yeah, fantastic. Plates and stuff here. You're okay with me taking this video, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he has tons of material outside that's been collected, I guess. And this is the reason why we like this is because it's actually from the redwoods and all over here, and it's a scenic woodwork called Corbley's and uh, I'm gonna put a link in the description for his Instagram as well so much material to work with if you have an imagination that I do not and that is the company beautiful spot to stop pick up some memories like I said, if we're never down here again, it would be a shame to miss out on taking a piece of a memory or a souvenir from here. So this morning's coffee turned out to be a side, um, a side business selling mini pancakes, which I've never seen before, with the toppings of your choice. So we picked up 15 pancakes is actually 10 bucks it's awesome i'm going to put a link into the description for the uh for the company uh, and their instagram because uh, i actually forgot their name but i did take a photograph of it and i will add that into this but what did you think of the pancakes i know you're not a big you didn't want a lot so wow really good yeah. a little not overly sweet but just a hint so a very light dessert to go with oh. your coffee or your tea. Yeah, I mean, I did Nutella. I did Nutella with some a small amount of syrup, blueberries and strawberries, and the whipped cream. This is awesome. Like it is 
perfect little mini size pancakes. Yeah, they're not donuts. The, the lady at the coffee bar, the drive through coffee bar, she said it was donuts, but um, they're actually mini pancakes. Awesome. So that was Miranda, and we got Garberville, that's the name, 12 miles away. Um, when we did a U-turn, you saw the gas station there. The fuel actually was reasonably priced for the California pricing system, $5.25 a gallon, which we've been seeing $5.48 and higher. So for the middle of the avenue, which is really off the beaten track, was actually a really good price for fuel. I'm guessing Shell is taking over because there was no names on the gas station, and this is not a promotion for Shell, but for you EV drivers, it looked like they'd been putting some EV stations and they look like fast chargers, so DC, DC, sorry, DC charging. Um, but what a quaint little town of Miranda. It's well worth a stop. It's got some uh, cafeterias in there, some restaurants, um, but definitely the uh, wood, the sips coffee joint really nice and depending on what day and as is that the mini donut lady is there sorry mini pancake lady is there sips told me it was donuts um, but it was actually pancakes um, it's a it's actually a ma and daughter setup um, mama's got some um, what do you call those not lotions rubs she makes homemade rubs and stuff uh, Sandra's picked up a sample which we haven't experienced yet or looked at um, but really really pleasant uh oh what's going on here one lane road road low road closed okay half mile head what does that mean that we can't drive it oh traffic lights okay Sorry, we've got a bit of construction or something going on and they've blocked the road off. But uh, Miranda is definitely worth a stop. I don't know, we were there for a good half an hour. So, really, really good. And carrying on now, down the Avenue of Giants to Garberville and see uh, what we experience here. Corbleys. Corbleys? Corbleys. Corbleys. Woodworking. Fantastic, unique pieces of redwood. From table slabs to little tiny redwood trees they've cut out. What did you buy? Well, we'll have to show you. We'll put a picture on it later, but. We bought a slab of redwood. So it's about an inch and a half thick to go on the wall. And it's got four different colors in it from the sugar wood, like which is the outside to the, like from the bark. You carry on, I'm gonna push this button. And then the darker the wood is the older, the center of the tree. So beautiful piece. We're just gonna probably take some artwork off and showcase that off and it's got the little burrs little dots are the burrs where the it's been stressed um, so that's one of the pieces and they had this beautiful um, he figures that tree it's a round big ball it's a nice piece and it's got a, a drill hole in the center where they put almost like a test tube inside of it for a flower and I asked, he said, that piece there, because it's got like, the darker the wood on the redwoods, that's how old, it makes it older and older. So he figures that that piece there is about a thousand years old. Because it almost has a black undertone to it. And it's, you can see the, the markings of the um, burls on it. Now, when I was getting my coffee, you seemed to be taking forever to come back because you ran in there because he offered you a really good deal on that piece because you really liked it. And you went back because you said, you know what, I can justify that. But why were you so long? He actually, on the underneath side, because it was not stamped, some of the original pieces from the original owners are not stamped. They know they have to be stamped, but they're not yet. 
Um, so they did stamp it. So he got a torch and on a metal plaque with their name, he had to heat this up. It's almost like branding a horse sort of thing or a cow. Not a horse, a cow, I guess. And once he heated that up, he just held it on the base of this um, beautiful piece of artwork. And so I have it branded now. And uh, I will uh, do a video on the pieces. We're just not going to open them up right now because he's wrapped them up. He's wrapped them all up. And because we're traveling, so. But they are pretty. And the, the slab that we got, it's got like three pieces. Three to uh, four pieces, I would say four. They're not pieces, I shouldn't say that. Three to four different colors. Um, one is like a blonde. Now I forgot what he called it. Oh, sugar. A sugar. Oh, what was it called? Something. Sugar almond, mm -hmm. almond sugar, something or other. Blonde. And, oh, okay. So how do we do this now then? That's confusing. Okay. We can't get around here then, so we've got to miss it. Okay. Excuse us, everybody. We have a road that's just a washout, actually. That's very confusing. Except the road was done. I guess we go down here. I'm going to go down here for a minute. Just in case. We have to take a detour. We'll come back to that conversation in a minute. Take this detour. I'm not sure what this detour is going to do. It's not going to go anywhere. We have to come back. Might as well we're going to do this detour. We might as well. Want a chunk of redwood back there? <laughs> see, because we can't take Bella off the road. We'll see what we can see down here. Oh, that's narrow. We have no clue where we're going. Yeah. He's ran from somewhere. He's gonna go up here a little ways because we don't get very often the chance in the Avenue of Giants to take a road that's off the beaten track to see if there's anything hidden in the forests. So that's what we're gonna do right now. It's going to somebody's house, actually. It's pretty rough. Keep out. Keep out. Okay, so, definitely going to do a U turn here. I'm going to go back and now figure out how to do the Avenue of Giants. There's no detour on this road, considering it did say the Avenue of Giants is the way we're going. Um, and the road was closed a half a mile, but then it had a traffic light to let you go through. But then the that culvert, said one one way. Yeah. And then the culvert was missing. Or like one lane. And it said road is completely closed. And I'm fine with that. But if you're going to do that, tell, tell us there's a detour or something like it's not telling us anything. So. Anyway, uh, back to the branding. Uh, I'm not sure where Sandra left it off, but yeah, she was in there forever. And you well, he had to wait for it to cool down, everything else, then they have to wrap it, so. But he, not only did he brand it, he branded it, and then what did they have to do after they branded it? He put um, a special oil on, oh, on top of it. English oil or whatever? An English oil, not a special oil, and you could buy it anywhere, just so it soaks in, so, and so it doesn't crack, because once it dries, after he brands it, it will possibly, it will crack. So to stop that, so the oils will soak in before we get home. So there was a culvert washout at Phillipsville that we couldn't get through. So we hopped on the highway and actually looking at the map, there was not much more of the Redwoods Drive uh, after Phillipsville anyway. So we hopped the highway and we just got off, I uh, forget the name of the town, and now we are heading down Redwood Drive, carrying on towards Garberville. 
we were actually disappointed before we got into this area because we thought we were missing out on stuff but it looking at the map it didn't look like we were missing out on anything so this is sort of a parallel road to the highway again uh, i'm gonna guess it's a lot slower and probably add maybe a mile or two on it's six miles to garberville so we are going a little bit of a windy road up and down so it's going to be interesting so if you're planning on doing this section and the road is intact you may have to get onto the highway anyway at phillipsville and we do apologize for bella's whining today yeah she's not feeling well it was uh it's like every two hours up and down all night with her welcome so, to garberville welcome to, to garberville yeah um, we noticed that Redwood Drive is not the Redwood Avenue and the scenery totally changes so at Phillipsville you're not seeing much more in the way of the Redwoods so this is the bigger town um, and again a lot of buildings have shut down yeah we've just uh, headed north of Garberville the freeway ended into a single lane like you can see and we're just coming into Richardson's Richardson Forest Grove Richardson Grove we just exited there some big trees again which we are still in Humboldt County yes again coming out oh there's another one wow oh there's the grandfather tree is this it they talk somebody talked about there holy cow look at that one over there you have to go on the way back okay so we'll do the grandfather tree on the way back yeah okay